Hello everybody, welcome back to Speedway Motors. My name's Tim. Always glad when you can join us again to talk about some of the great products that we have that might help you out, including tools. In this case, tools for working on hard lines. I'm working in my two-car garage on my hot rod, and I've come down to just the details now. I'm getting ready to get this car on the road, and I'm working on all my plumbing. Uh, plumbing up my brake system and also my fuel system. In the previous video I showed you some great tools for bending hard line and in this particular video I'm going to show you a dynamite piece for putting a 45 degree flare on your on your tubes, especially brake line and in this case some fuel line. I'm going to show you a particular tool that I came across that has solved all of my problems. I am a rookie when it comes to flaring, uh, so in this case I needed a tool that I knew was going to do a dynamite job. You know you don't want to have any issues when you go to stop your car, especially uh, you know anytime you're dealing with fuel. You want to make sure everything seals up nice. And I can't tell you over the years how many people I've talked to on the phone that have struggled with cheaper flaring tools and not getting a good flare on the line. I mean, people can do it, but it is, it is a challenge and there's an art to it. Uh, this particular tool I'm going to show you today is awesome. It, it puts a great flare on every time, takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So without further ado, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to have you over my shoulder and we'll take this tool out of the box because it's a little daunting when you peek inside this thing uh, the way it comes. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to assemble the tool and then how to put a flare on brake line and then also how to put a flare on uh, some fuel line. And these are both for my hot rod, so this ought to be a lot of fun. We'll get something done in the process. So uh, come on with me and we'll take a look. All right, guys, so here we are. Here's the box. This is how this particular 45 degree flaring tool comes when you buy it here from us at Speedway. Uh, I'll be honest, again, I'm a rookie, so when I opened this thing up, I thought, oh my gosh, this thing looks a little complicated for me. <laughs> but turns out it's very simple. It's a wonderful tool. It comes well packaged, as you can see. Uh, the primary uh, uh, tool itself handle, uh, the tool pod, which I'll show you in a second how that all rotates and works really slick, and then your different dies for different sizes of tubing, and we'll show you how those work too. Comes with a really great instruction set, uh, which I actually read, uh, and hopefully this video will make it so you don't even have to read these and it'll be faster for you, uh, but uh, if you need them, they're here. So I'm going to take this thing out and kind of show you how it works. I've got a vise here, and it's very important you have access to a vise. First time I used this, I used it on a little peewee vise, and that worked, but you know, a nice big vise like this that's solidly uh, secured to a bench makes it nice because you're going to need some leverage with this particular tool, and I'll show you how it all goes together. So first things first, you take the main uh, portion of the tool out, you see how well built it is. This thing's dynamite. Everything you can tell is, is well thought out. Uh, this particular piece goes in a vise, and you can see the boss here uh, for, for clamping it down. And when you clamp it down, just be mindful of uh, the handle goes in like this, and you're going to be cranking it this way. So depending upon the, you know, the way your vise is set up, you want to put this so you can get some nice leverage on it, and, and uh, it doesn't have an awkward movement. So uh, of course, it just slides right into your vise just like that, and kind of push it down to make it straight and I'll tighten it up nice and tight. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Of course, you take your handle out, and there's a little set screw under here that you have to tighten up so your handle doesn't flop out when you're, when you're putting the pressure down, just a little Phillips screw. I'll tighten that up right now, and there you have it. You can kind of see how that's spring operated. And yeah, we're gonna show you all the details here in a second. The very next thing you have to do there's a little uh, rotating pod here uh, that has all the different shaping tools on it for the ends of your tubing. And it goes, you know, from uh, 3 sixteenths all the way up to quarter inch, 5 sixteenths. Uh, so there's a pretty good uh, array of, of uh, tools on here that we'll talk about here in just a second. The cool thing about this is it just snaps right on. There's a little round portion here, pops it down and there's little ball, balls in there, spring-loaded balls, so you can uh, select your tool really easily. So uh, with that said, we're about ready to go. Now I'm going to grab some tubing and we're going to see if we can put some flares on the line for you and show you how easy it is to get a nice 45 degree double flare. Of course this thing does bubble flares and single flares too, but we're going to do a bubble, or a double rather, and uh, show you just how nice this works on brake line. So, Let's get started. Okay guys, so here we have it. This is the tool all uh, 
into the vise, locked down tight, uh, and it's ready to go. The tool pod, as you can see, just hooks down on this circular boss, and it's really nice how it moves. Like I mentioned before, it, it moves from one operation to the next. The operations are all marked uh, for the tool. Uh, so, of course, this again is set up to do uh, 45 degree double flares, uh, and this is the tool pod that's included in the box. You can also get other tools if you want to do different types of operations uh, with this tool, but this is how we have it set up. So, OP0, that's operation one. I'll show you that in a second. And then for each size of tubing, it has OP.1 or OP.2. So operation one, operation two. If you're going to do a double flare, which is to put the bubble flare on it first and then go in with the angled uh, uh, double flare. So I'll show you a double flare on 3 16 brake line and kind of how this tool works. You're going to see how easy it is. Super slick. So first I'm going to select the right dies. And these, uh, this particular tool comes with four sets of dies. The first one is for 3 16 And here you have it. And they're marked 3 16 right on the die itself. And then there's two options. Uh, you can have uh, uh, the flat, there's kind of a flat end here, or an angled end, which I kind of like the angled better. Uh, and you'll kind of see how that works in just a second. So that's the way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. You put the die right in the tool, just like this, and it slides in position. There's only one way it can go. And again, it's really important that you select the same type of, uh, of uh, surface uh, on the back side of your flare. Again, I'm going to do the angled, so I'm going to make sure that all matches up. Then you find your, your piece of tubing that you're ready to flare. Now this particular piece of tubing, I've prepared it already. You know, once you cut it with your cutting tool, uh, then you got to clean it up a little bit. So you can use a deburring tool uh, like I did with this. Basically, you're, you're working it in around to get a nice uh, chamfered edge on that piece of tubing. And then I also use a piece of sandpaper you know, to, to sand that smooth and then put a little bit of a, a rounded edge on the outside too. Uh, it, it helps an awful lot. Uh, so this one's all ready to go. I don't feel any sharp edges or, or any issues going on with this particular uh, piece of tubing, so it's, it's ready to go. The first thing you want to do is get it kind of sitting in your tool and let this stick out of the die a little bit. We'll deal with that in a second. This tool sets just the right depth. So you get the piece of tubing in there, make sure it sticks out of the end a little bit. You flip this guy up and then there's a little latch mechanism. Push that in, you're locked into place. And you just tighten this guy down. I'm not giving it any pressure right now, just a little bit. I've got it set to OP0, operation zero, and all this does is it pushes that piece of tubing through the die until it's flush with the end. So there we go. Now you can crank this thing down. And I crank it down pretty good because you don't want your tube slipping, especially when you put the bubble flare on. There's a lot of pressure on it. So once I've got it tightened down, bring this guy over to uh, 3 16 operation one, which is right here. And this little tool, has a little nipple that sticks inside the tube so it doesn't collapse it. <coughs> Once you have that ready, I always like to put a little anti-seize or just a little bit of oil on these. Just kind of keeps them from sticking. I've just found that that helps. This particular tool doesn't need it every time, but makes it nice. So you're ready to push this down, and there's a little bit of pressure, but not much. Cranks it down. Shazam, we got it. That does the first operation. Second, that creates the bubble. You go to operation two on 3 16 which is an orange guy over here. And again, a little bit of oil never, never hurts, just kind of keeps things nice. And we'll crank it down again. And you feel it, it's so nice. This handle, you can feel how the pressure is affecting uh, the tool and affecting the tube and you know as soon as you have that nice flare on the tubing it's a done deal. So then you loosen this guy up and pop it out. First thing you'll notice is your dies are stuck together but usually just a little tap from a tool. I don't really have any big hammer or anything. I'll just hit it with a screwdriver and that separates and you can see how nice that is. And This pops right out and that's 45 degree double flare that's going to seal. 
perfectly every time. So there you have it. Now I'm going to try doing a flare on some fuel line. If you tuned into my previous video, you saw that I, I created a fuel line for my early Hemi uh, and I made it extra long on the end because I had to do some measuring. I needed to make sure this thing was going to make it all the way to my low pressure regulator. So I'm ready to cut it off now. So I'll make a quick cut and I'll, whoops, I'll dress that up. Sorry for all the racket. And then we'll put a flare on this guy too so you can kind of see how it works on larger fuel line. And whenever you cut line to length, whenever you're flaring it, I always tell folks, you know, give it a quarter of an inch because by the time you press the tubing in and make the flare, it's going to take some of your length away. So just be mindful of that. So bear with me. I'm going to cut this tube off real quick. So we'll get that done. And then we'll use a different set of dies to make this particular. I'm using my little my little cutoff tool. Of course, there's bigger ones that do the job faster. I kind of like this little guy. I've had this for a long time. And uh, it just does a nice job getting this stuff cut off. And we'll put a nice flare on here. Don't let me forget to put my fitting on there before I do the, the flare. I can't tell you how many times I get excited about using this cool flaring tool and then, oh darn it, didn't get my fitting on there. But Again, guys, I'm a shade tree mechanic rookie. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there watching this that are thinking, holy cow, Tim, you're not telling me anything I, I don't already know. So there's my, my first cut. It's not bad, but I'm gonna put a little chamfer, deburr the inside a little bit. Of course, you wanna get all the crud out of your line before you, before you put this on your car. You want any of the metal filings to go through your fuel system. I'm going to sand this off a little bit. I typically wouldn't do it over my flaring tool, but just so you can see on the video what I'm up to. Any sharp edges, I'm going to get rid of them. Blow it off. I think we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to take out my, my tool here. I'm going to readjust. Oh yeah, my fitting. I'm going to get that put where it needs to be. Make sure it's on the right way, just like that. There we go. We're ready. So I'm going to pull my tool out here to work on this particular line. There I have it. Thanks for bearing with me. You definitely want to want to do this the right way. So, like I did with the brake line, I'm going to slide this guy in. And again, I'm going to use the angled back. You can do just the other side if you're just doing a bubble flare. That's no problem. Um, that does the job no, just fine for you. Nice thing is, is these are dimpled <laughs> on the little dies, so you always know if you got this, uh, this two ends matching each other because you just put the dimples both the same side and you're good to go. Again, I'm gonna slip this down to operation zero again. That sets your, your depth on your tool. I'm gonna flip this guy over, lock it down. Just put a, just a itty bit of pressure on this guy, just enough that I can push it through and bottom it out. There we go. And you can tighten this guy up as tight as you want. There we go. I like to get it nice and tight again. No sense to have that thing slip out of there. So got it bottomed out. Operation zero, three-eighths. Operation one. There we go. Put a little bit of oil on that guy. And I said 3 eighths. I really meant 5 sixteenths. We want to make sure we do this right. <laughs> okay, bigger line, a little more pressure. Make sure this is nice and tight. That's good. Oh, I felt it crush. Oh, looks just right. I wish you could see in there with the camera. It's a perfect uh, bubble flare. Operation one's done. So now uh, 5 sixteenths, operation two. 
can just spin it around, locks right down. There we go. And I, you guys hopefully understand how much fun it is doing this stuff when you can do it yourself. So here we go, operation two. I'm going to give a little bit of pressure and puts a really nice flare. Just like, just like you'd buy at the auto parts store. So now I can loosen this guy up. Pop it out. And there she is. Look at that. Love it. Perfect. And that should seal up wonderfully. And I shouldn't have any issues with that leaking when I get it done on my hot rod. So again, a really, really nice piece. And if you buy one of these, you're going to be the envy of all your friends. You won't be able to tell any of them that you actually own this because they'll want to borrow it from you all the time. You know, that was one of the things before I bought this tool. I thought, you know, it's an expensive piece. Is it worth it? And I got to say, what's your time worth? This thing's wonderful. And just having that peace of mind of being able to take my kids in my hot rod, not have to worry about my brake lines failing or leaking or anything like that. Great. All right, everybody. So there you have it. My fuel line's all done, ready to go. I can't say enough about this wonderful tool. It takes all the guesswork out of it. And me being a rookie, uh, you know, I'm sure that you know you can do the same thing with uh, tools that are less expensive. But I really love the amount of time this tool saves me. There are a lot of phone calls that come into Speedway with a lot of struggles trying to get good flares online, and this really answers the call. If you need a piece that's worth the investment, this is the way to go. Again, don't tell your buddies that you have it. You'll be loaning it out so often you won't even be able to keep it in your own toolbox, but uh, it, it'll be our secret. It's a, it's a wonderful piece. If you have questions, check us out. Check out our website. We have this tool on and we'll be able to answer your questions directly there. You can call our tech department on the phones. We're happy to answer any questions that you have as well. We're just so happy you can join us. We always love it when you stop by the studio. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care, everybody.